um, project is called Attractive Gum. And our, <laughs> our hypothesis was to see if different gums were if different gums varied in the amount of bacteria that they collected. Mm -hmm. So this would mean um, different gums would be better in cleaning your mouth than other gums would be. Did you collect it from around the building or did you collect it from the gum? Um, from our from the gum. Mm -hmm. So let's um, rewind a second. Tell me a little bit about um, the procedure of what it looked like to collect bacteria. So, okay, first we took different types of gum and we had one person um, try all the gums. So, who was our bacteria girl? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we chose one person because so we have a consistent amount of enzymes mm -hmm. in the mouth. And then we, if she would chew it for two hours every day, and then we would grow the gum in agar for five days. Okay. For each of the gum. Um, talk to me about your literature review. What are some things you studied about before uh, creating this project? Uh, I studied about how the bacteria is in the mouth. There's over like 20 billion microbes in the mouth, so it's impossible to like find all right. of them. Mm -hmm. And that there's also good and bad bacteria for okay. you. I also researched about gum, like the history of gum, what goes into gum. Talk to me about that a little bit. Okay. So the main components in gum is gum base, um, softeners, mm -hmm. um, and flavors. So that goes in all gum. So did you guys use the same gum or different gums? Different we used gums. different gums from different companies mm -hmm. to test whether they would affect, would change or not very unique. And they had different ingredients in them. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, what was your control group? Our control group was a normal mouth swab at okay. 9 o'clock. So was you guys, you did cheek cells on that one? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And around the teeth, because that's where gum would be. Yep, mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Um, talk to me about <clears throat> some of your data, please. Okay, so for our control, uh, we all we grew this much, like here's a small sample mm -hmm. of the bacteria that we grew. And then for orbit, it grew like the least uh, bacteria that we saw. Mm -hmm. It took the less area of the uh, petri dish. So you guys have two bees a day. This looks like the, the different types of bacteria that you were able to mm -hmm. observe yeah, under a microscope. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And the growth rate. Uh, and we noticed that the gum for red hot had the most uh, area for bacteria on the petri so dish. So the cinnamon. It grew the most. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And which one is that on your data table? If I, it's just hard to... Okay, okay so that grew the most... One it, tiny and, and so, did it grow faster as well? Yeah, it yeah. did grow faster. So the cinnamon had more bacteria captured mm -hmm. and it grew, faster. grew faster. Okay. Yeah. Was that your hypothesis? Is, what did you think? Which one did you think was going to grow the most and grow the fastest? Uh, I thought it was cinnamon because as we did research, I found articles about cinnamon gum. Talk to me about that. And so it talked about how... I don't know, it was, it was weird. It talked about how it was more effective in some way. I forgot. And, and, and effective of removing bacteria from your... your in, like, like questioning breath or... Yeah. Well, that makes sense because bacteria is what causes... Mm -hmm. um, do you guys know what the... And what's the, 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 the health project or what's the health topic that is bad breath? Do you know what that's called? Because with an H, how... Do you guys learn anything about halitosis in your project? Yeah, but I just... You didn't know how to say it. Yeah, I got it. No problem. There's another one. Too. Am I late? Shh. Shh. Not yet. We're presenting, Mom. <laughs> so, yeah, halitosis. So, they said in your research you were finding... What about cinnamon and halitosis? That it was actually the most effective? Yeah. Got it. And okay. also bacteria in the tongue that also made um, bad breath. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Talk to me about if um, your process. So, if you were going to change the process up and... Redo the entire experiment again. What are three things that you would do differently? Um, well, first off, we had some experimental errors. Okay, talk to me about those. Uh, one would pick up the Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Friday, we chewed... Friday and Thursday, we chewed two, chewed two different types of gum, and we grew them in Petri dish. But then we had another uh, type of gum that we had to start on Mon uh, Tuesday when we came back. Because we had to do it between the hours of 9 and 11. Right. Yeah, so it's one gum each day. But mm -hmm. So did one bacteria have more time to grow, or did yeah. you use... Okay, so which one was that? The trident. Yeah. But even with the more time, what was the result? That, that uh, red hot mm -hmm. had the most bacteria. Still had the most bacteria. Yeah. That's interesting. 
Um, what do you think this ties into as far as other disciplines or um, what knowledge did you guys take from this that you might use in your future? Like personally. Did it change how you feel about gum? Did it change? What, yeah. yeah what, tell me about that. Uh, for me, now I know that um, if I chew gum, it'll get rid of like the bad breath that I have. Sneaky food. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that if, because when you're sick, you're going, um, you're going to have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So if I chew some gum, it's going to take a few of those bacteria. Mm -hmm. Also, by chewing gum, it you produce more um, saliva, which flushes out, constantly flushes out bacteria. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So if you were a dentist, what would you encourage, to chew or not to chew? And if to chew, what brand would you encourage? Um, to chew, I would encourage Red Hot because it seems like it was really effective in this experiment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though you, I noticed that you guys hated the taste. Yeah, I hated it. It was actually not that bad. I still have it in my you diet. got used to it. <laughs> and what do you think? Uh, I know she was chewed for two hours. So did you do any research on what happens after two hours um, with gum? Does it collect more? Does it collect less? Did you find any research on the effectiveness of gum we after that? I haven't seen any um, research on that. Okay, cool. Um, talk to me about, so you talked a little bit about experimental error. Were there any other experimental errors in your experiment? Um, another one was that we could, didn't keep it constant to 9 and 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. And, oh, another controllable error was that the food that you ate before you started the experiment, they were all different. So I ate cereal one day, <laughs> uh, yogurt the other day. Got it. Uh, and so it's... I kept switching, mm -hmm. and that's not going to have, like, a constant bacteria that's going to be collected in my mouth. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you were going to redo this in a year, what do you think you would connect this to that you didn't explore in this? What are some things that came out of it that you'd want to know more about? Like, did you feel like after you were done with it, you were like, I wish we would have learned more about that, or what if this, or how would you change this experiment and continue, I guess? Um... I would research more about if gum actually, like, destroys bacteria. Mm, good. Or if it just captures mm -hmm. it. Got it. Anything else, Anna? I don't know, Nancy. Um, so far, this is, like, what I really wanted to learn mm -hmm. so far. Because I always hear uh, people say that if you chew gum, you will get, like, bacteria out of your mouth. And I, don't know, I was kind of skeptical. I didn't really... Because I didn't do any research about it. So I just, like, said, oh, they're just saying that or something. But now that I actually did... Uh, an experiment, experiment, and it showed results. Now I know that it's actually true. Uh, but in a year, I guess, uh, I want to go. Uh, I want to put like a longer day to see how much bacteria it will actually grow, and kind of put research about what types of bacteria. Even mm -hmm. though there's like, what we said, like there's thousands of bacteria. Mm -hmm. I just want to look at the one that was majority mm -hmm. shown. So you, if you would have time, you would actually gotten to the point where we could do slides of the bacteria and do that, but it was a timeliness thing. Um, I'm curious if you found any data about people who save their gum or chew their gum for really long periods of time, because I know some people put their gum on bedposts and some people stick their gum behind their ear uh, and some people are gum savers. Did you guys find any data on that? Uh, I kind of, yeah. kind of, but not really. There was an article about um, gum on the floor in Japan. Oh, really? Uh -huh. It still grew bacteria. Um, even though it was exposed to ultraviolet light, uh -huh. it was still grew bacteria. Wow. And they hypothesized that um, the gum actually blocked the light from the bacteria. Mm -hmm. And so it, and it still grew. Wow. And yeah. it's so good. So that's some pretty heavy microbes in our mm -hmm. mouth. Anything else in your research that you found? Because you guys shared the same data. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, and I guess last but not least, um, what was the most difficult thing about your project? One first question. The difficult uh, thing about um, we're kind of like getting data in a way because we can't get exact measurements of like how many colonies of bacteria grew, yeah. and that was kind of complicated. And so we tried our best to estimate. Mm -hmm. But you could visually see it. I mean, the digital mm -hmm. microscope, I think. And, and I will celebrate that with you guys. You definitely did a really good job using the digital microscope, and I feel like you found some proficiency in using those scientific tools, which is great. I, I also wanted to, like, know the exact type of bacteria. Maybe we could send it in a lab. Yep, yep. Yeah. So maybe starting earlier and mm -hmm. growing the bacteria a little longer yeah. um, and not over Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. So we would have got it started faster, and that would have given us more time for analysis, which makes perfect sense. Um, can you guys show me your citations and your data records, please? Thank you. And next up is going to be Kelsey and Daya.
Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Got it. All right. Cool. Both you guys said that. And then your data records. Do you have them dated, or did you take notes in a notebook um, about your data? All right. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's go on to.